Hi everybody, welcome to my lesson 3, building a Christmas uh, greeting card. In this lesson we will build a Christmas greeting card and you can send the card to your loved ones when you share the Scratch project. Here's a demo of the completed greeting card. To get started building this greeting card, first download some resource files from my website, and that link is actually um, uh, written in my YouTube description, but uh, I will type it out here, just uh, wjbeacon.sg slash public slash lesson underscore tree underscore x m e s that's a capital X there eh? underscore capital G R E E T I N G underscore cut underscore resources dot zip Okay, so, and that should get your <coughs> download going, um, and in there are some of the um, images and music files which I would uh, use for the um, lesson, and it is done. And when you have the zip file on your computer, unzip the content into your project folder, uh, and I'm just going to extract it here in the download folder, and you will find some of the um, the GIF pictures and uh, uh, music MP3 files that's used for the um, lesson tree. Next, let's get started um, with the offline Scratch Editor. With the editor open, we can first remove the default sprite. Just do a right click and click on delete. Let's select the stage backdrop. The stage is like a big sprite that controls the uh, background scenes. There are scripts, backdrops, and sound resources associated with this stage. I like to think of the stage as your pointer manager who will direct the entire game or animation. For this greeting card, the stage will manage the backdrops across the greeting card animation and play the background music. Let's select the background tab and choose Upload background from file and
Browse to the folder that contains the downloaded resources. <clears throat> Select the opening. Close. Fully open backdrops. And click open. Try that again. Okay. Next, click on the sounds tab, and we are going to bring in the background music, which is the We Wish You a Merry Christmas MP3 file here. And it's going to do some MP3 conversion to its internal format. I will just remove the default sound. Now we're ready to program the stage sprite. Click on the scripts tab and you can start building your program with these coding blocks. What we have here are several categories. There's motion, looks, Sounds. I remember that we are programming the building blocks for the selected stage, which is the current one being selected. And you can see a blue outline. So let's go to the events category and choose the first block, which is a an event block that says that when green flag is clicked. Now if you remember, um, on the presentation stage, on the top right to start the program is when you click on this green flag. So this code here, this block here will, um, will be running when it detects that the green flag has been clicked. Now, what do we want to do when the green flag is clicked? We will like the background to be showing a, the card that's closed and then show it the uh, opening followed by the final backdrop which is a fully open background. And um, what we can do is we go to the looks category and we can choose the block say that says switch background to um, whichever backdrop that you have um, um, in your Backdrop list. So if, if you I look at the backdrop that I have here, I do have my opening closed and fully open backdrops. I can remove this um, default backdrop, which I don't need. And let's go back to my scripts here. So I can select um, which backdrop that I would like to be displayed. So when I first start running, I would want to have a close. And this is the close wishing card backdrop. And when I want it to run in sequence, I can just join these blocks together. And 
the next thing that should happen is I should show the cut opening. So again, I will select another switch backdrop um, programming block, and I will choose this to be um, opening. And I will put it here, and followed by um, fully open. Now, let's give it a run and see what happens. I will click on this green flag here, and it will start running the executing these blocks here that say switch a backdrop to close, then to open, and fully open. Let's take a look. And I don't know if your eyes can actually see the changes of the backdrop, uh, but it's, it's very fast, and uh, it's possible that you might have missed it, but let's see if you can actually... Um, see the tree backdrops changing very quickly. Did you see it? So I my guess is that you you probably didn't see how the backdrop has changed because it happened so quickly. So um what we want to do is we want to slow down the backdrop changes. And we can do that by going to the control category. And we can put in a weight. So it's like pause. When I change something, um, I want to wait before I switch to the, um, the next block. In this case, uh, I will switch to the close wishing card. Wait for a second. Then it switches to the opening. Um, wishing card backdrop and I would then insert another wait for one second before it switches to the fully open wishing card and let's take a look how it look how it looks like when we run it now and there you go I think you can now see the um, the backdrop of the cut opening. Now, what happened? What is uh, what is going to happen next? Now that we have opened the um, the wishing card here, we need to play a music, the background music, and that will be a simple block from the sounds category, and. We can now choose play the sound, the background music. It says, "We wish you a, mu a merry Christmas." <clears throat> and let's take, um, let's test run it. Make sure it works as uh, expected. So. The music is now working, and we can start to bring in the um, the pictures uh, in the card when it's open. Um, so let's upload the sprite from files, so we can bring in the um, the first Christmas mistletoe. And now, as you can see, the, the scale is uh, too big. And what you have over here, helper 2, that says um, grow and shrink. So this allows you to shrink the sprite that I, that I am interested in. And when I click on it, while hovering above that sprite, it is doing as what it say, which is to shrink it. And I'm going to now position this sprite to um, maybe here. Looks about right. Um, let's shrink it a bit more. 
Okay. Looks about right. Okay, and let's bring the next sprite, which is the second mistletoe. And we'll have to do the same thing, which is to shrink it. And, okay, and let's place it somewhere nice, in the right place. Uh, let's bring it a bit smaller. Okay, that looks about right. <coughs> and we need to bring in the Merry Christmas tax. And adjust the size. And it's about right here. So it looks a bit big. Okay. So. Now let's take a look what happens when we run it. Now when I click on the, the green flag. Um, it's going to tell Auto Sprite that um, that the event, remember that we chose this event, is going to happen. And if you remember, if you go back to the background stage here, we do have some code. So it is actually going to do something. But the rest of the sprites in my program doesn't have any code. So it is just sitting there waiting for something to do. And let's take a look. So, and we do see that the, um, the card backdrop is ho ha opening. The music is playing. Um, but we don't want these, um, sprites. The, mistletoe and the Christmas tax, Christmas card tax to uh, appear until it's fully open. Um, what we want to do is when the, uh, let's go back to the first sprite here, when the green flag is click, we want it to, we want to hide it. We don't want it to appear because we know that when it when the program starts, the the Christmas card is closed, so it should um, it should be hiding. And we do have a hiding block here. All right, and let's do the same thing for the other sprites. There you go. And the Christmas tax. Okay. Very good. So we know we now know that when we click on the green flag, the tree sprites here will be hiding. Um, that's the first part. But after the card has opened, we want to know when it's open, and then we want it to appear. And how do we do that? So there is um, there is a need to synchronize across the different sprites here. In in this case, the backdrop um, when it switches to the fully open. We want it to send a signal or a message to the other sprites telling them, I am now open and you can now appear and do your stuff. So how do we do that? So remember that these sprites in the backdrop are uh, separate. Think of them as a separate individual. And they don't know what the other sprite is doing. And you have to make an effort to tell each other or signal to each other that some other action is done and they, they can proceed. And in this case, we can do a, 
let's take a look for the message here. Let's see. Ah, there you go. So I can now broadcast the message, but I want to put it in the right place, and I will put it in between um, switching the backdrop to fully open uh, before the music plays, so that the other sprites can start to do their stuff. And we can put in a meaningful uh, message. In this case, I will say uh, start playing, so the other sprites will do the animation, and, and that's good. So, the backdrop now does the message broadcast. Now, what should we do with the rest of the sprite here? So, we will need to listen, um, and we can choose that event here. When I receive the start playing message, I can start to put my programming blocks below here. And the uh, first thing I want to do is I want to appear. I want to show myself. And um, I can actually duplicate this to blocks and drop it to my other two sprites here and when I go and select them and it's there waiting for me to just move it in the right place and that this um, saves some clicks for you if you do have uh, a lengthy uh, block um, set of blocks that you want to copy to other sprites all right, so let's let's give it a test, and let's do that. Good. So when the card is open, the the sprites inside the uh, card will now appear, which is great. Now the next step is we want to bring in some snowflakes, and let's first bring in the um, Snowflakes um, pictures, and we have snowflake number one, and it is too huge, so let's shrink it. And okay, so it's not, not that. Let's choose that. Let's move it away first. And now in in this case we don't want this uh, we don't want to import as many snowflakes as the number of um, snowflakes that appears on my cart. If I have a few hundred snowflakes in my greeting cards, I just want to have only one sprite and recreate that snowflake effect with just one sprite and some scripts. If you were to manually create them, um, then you'll end up importing or duplicating on your sprite list a few hundred snowflakes. And that doesn't seem like an easy effort. And let's, um, in my approach, I will have one master snowflake, and he would then clone many snowflakes, and each of the cloned snowflakes will have some um, programming codes to tell it what it should do for each of the the clone. So the next stage that we are ready to do is to automate the snowflake here. Um, go to the costume and what we're going to do is we are going to bring in 
another snowflake uh, pattern and I will go to resources and you have actually a, two other designs here and I'm just going to bring in snowflake 2 which is uh, of a different pattern and as you can see this is the first pattern and this is the second pattern the reason being having different pattern uh, gives you a more realistic uh, feel when you create the clone of the snowflake you can actually uh, alternate between different snowflake uh, pattern and um, the first thing we want to do is when the when we start the um, the animation we want to hike this snowflake over here and what we can do is uh, put a height command so it will disappear when we start running the program and we would like the program next to um, create well actually we want to um, wait for the event um, when I receive start playing because that's when I know the card is fully open we will want to um, create clones um, of the snowflake but the uh, first thing I want to do is uh, make sure we wait for approximately three seconds so you know we want to get the music started first and three seconds about right when we get the start playing a message and then we would need to put in the loop that um, that would repeat the creation of the clone and we can use this control block that says repeat uh, ten times now you can change how many times you want to create the clone and um, I will put in about 20 snowflakes so that gives you uh, some you know um, sort of with enough snowflake throughout the whole uh, um, breeding cut and the music before it ends um, what happens that we would want to put inside this loop is to create a clone of myself now each time I create a clone it is going to take the current selected uh, costume so you might be starting off with this snowflake and after you create the first clone you can put a command that says next costume so you want to create the next snowflake with a different pattern and and with this next costume it will just uh, go down your costume list to the next one and if you have more um, it will just continue to go down the list and when it comes to the last snowflake it will wrap around to the first snowflake and next we will want to wait for a random amount of time so that we don't um, uh, generate all the, all the snowflakes at the same time and what you can do is you can wait um, wait a number of seconds but we don't want it to be looking all uniformly coming out at the same time um, we want to have something random and you can actually choose from the operators uh, category and you can pick a random um, and you can just put it into the um, the input for the wait seconds and this will the computer will generate a a random number and I like to put uh, the maximum of three so the the snowflake will will basically be cloned a uh, clone be created between any any time between one to three seconds as a um, to give it a, a feel like it's actually coming out from the sky now next we want to 
we would want to tell the clone what to do. Now that we're going to create a clone, let's see what will happen. So when it creates a clone, the clone will start executing the, uh, the, the instruction from when I start as a clone. So this is the, um, the event um, or the control that would actually start to execute the, uh, the list of instructions for that clone. And in this case, I will, I will like to go to a specific position. I like to go to from the, uh, the beginning of the top of the card and I like it to be between here to here. Now notice as I move the mouse, um, it, the X and Y position of my mouse is given here. And it, looking at here, when I put it to the extreme left of my um, second page of my card, it says uh, X being um, say minus 24 and on the extreme right will be 219. So I want the um, the snowflake to appear somewhere in between X being minus 24 to uh, 219. And when I clone, I will tell it to go to that position. Start from here. All right. And there you go. Now, again, I don't want to uh, to constantly be appearing at the same X position. And I want it to be random again, and I'm just going to pick a random number. And if you remember, my x is um, the extreme left is minus 24, and the extreme right is 219. So that means that the clone will use a position between uh, the extreme left to the extreme right of my um, of my cart where I want to display the snowflakes coming down and for the Y position I would uh, I'm just pointing at roughly where I want the the top of my cart uh, where it will be and I can see that it's about 159 so I'm just going to put in the Y being 159 alright so um, Next, we have to tell the snowflake to move, uh, you know, to create an illusion that is actually falling through the cart, falling down to the um, the ground, and we can easily do that with um, a a glide a number of seconds to a specific x and y value. Okay, so again. Glide would basically means uh, we tell the computer um, calculate number of seconds for it to move from the new x and y position. And in this case, the input is a one second. That's too fast. Um, I like the snowflake to float down. So again, I I want it to take a time, and I'm just going to give it a random number. And I've experimented between 15 to um, 25 gives me a, a nice floating feeling and the Y position here I will go to the the lowest position where I think the, um, the snowflake should disappear and you know 148 looks about right so I would spend 148 now, what about the X position, the things that we don't know what is being randomly generated when it started, the X position. So we can go to um, the motion category and we can query what is the current X position of this sprite, which you can bring it and drop it in here. So this X position will contain a value that is uh, randomly generated for this sprite. 
Now, what happens when the sprite reaches the bottom of the card? We um, we like the, the sprite to disappear. Well, actually, the clone of the sprite. So we will just include a command here that says delete this clone. And that will do the cleanup. And I think we can start to play. And let's take a look how it goes. Oh, now we um, we forgot something. Is that we have to um, show the clone, and so I'm just having some performance issue here. Okay, so we're going to have to show the clone, and we can do that by putting a show command. Remember that the the clone that's been created has the um, the same parent properties or attributes. In this case, it's it's in a hiding or it's being made invisible. And when I create a clone, I will tell it to show itself. And let's let's give it a try again. Okay, so that's my first clone. So we have all these clones that's appearing and it's executing this set of instructions here. Right, it's going from a specific uh, uh, random X position and, and a height of 159. And it glides down between 15 to 25 seconds to, uh, to its uh, current X position and the Y being minus or and as you can see, as it reaches the bottom, it will run to beat this clone. And that should give you the uh, nice uh, snowflake falling down. Right. So, as a um, as an additional um, challenge to you, you could think about try to um, change the color of the um, the snowflakes as it falls and you can use uh, additional um, um, let's see um, building blocks here which says change the color effect by 25 and I encourage you to give it a try put it into the um, insert into the uh, building blocks and see what the effect would be and you can also um, have the snowflake um, spin around as it falls down with these um, commands that says uh, turn number of degrees clockwise and anti-clockwise so as you um, as you fall you can you can call these commands and your your snowflakes will start to um, look different from each of the other snowflakes. They could be spinning, they could be with different colors, some could be bigger. Um, encourage you to give it a try and see what sort of um, um, special effects you can achieve with your snowflake. So now that you have um, created your Christmas uh, greeting card and it's time to share with, um, with the Scratch community and also you can share the link on your shared project to your friends and your loved ones and they can actually play the greeting card. An easy way to actually start sharing is uh, click on the file and you do have share to website and um, you can put in the specific greeting, uh, the project name and your scratch name and password and when you do that it will Share to your share to your Scratch account, and you can log into your Scratch account and um, um, copy the link to the you know, email and send it to your friends. For my third lesson, do like my video if you find it useful. I'll prepare more lessons in the coming weeks. Thank you for watching.